Join us as Environmental Health Supervisor Tucker Stone inspects a local pool. The first tests are for chlorine. Tucker performs three tests, one for free chlorine, one for combined chlorine, and one for total chlorine levels. Free chlorine shows the level of disinfecting chlorine available to keep the pool sanitary. The level of free chlorine needed varies. Combined chlorine should be below 0.5 and in most cases in an outdoor pool will stay at or near zero. Total chlorine is the sum of free chlorine plus combined chlorine. Notice that Tucker takes water samples away from the inlets and outlets of the pool. Next, Tucker tests the pH. pH indicates how acidic the water is. pH is very important as it affects every other chemical in the pool water. pH must be maintained between 7.2 and 7.8. Next, Tucker tests the alkalinity, which is how acid is neutralized. Total alkalinity is a measure of water's resistance to change in pH. Total alkalinity levels cannot be too low or too high. Just like free chlorine, the proper level varies based on several factors. Tucker also checks for cyanuric acid levels. If those levels are off, it could bind up the chlorine. But it's not just the chemical balance in a pool that matters. Tucker also checks to be sure the fulcrum in the diving boards are locked in the forwardmost position. He checks to be sure there are at least two drains and that they are at least three feet apart. The drain covers should be Virginia Graham Baker compliant. Main drains must be in the deepest area of the pool, be covered by grates, and must be visible. Take a look at this life preserver. This flotation device would be required to have a 30 to 60 feet long throw rope attached and this shepherd's crook should have a 12 feet long non-telescopic pole on it like this one. All pools must have at least one back spine board. This pool has a slide that's over 10 feet high therefore it's required to have a lifeguard stationed at all times at the top and monitoring the bottom. Our inspector even has to check to be sure that any hoses have a backflow prevention device and that the pool is displaying signs like depth markings, no diving signs, and other warning signs. All gates need to be self-closing, self-latching, and lockable like this one. In addition, there must be a first aid kit in a location that is easily accessible at each pool. Next, Tucker moves inside to the equipment room to ensure that the equipment is safe and that chemicals are stored properly. The equipment room must be clean and well drained, adequately lit and ventilated, and inaccessible to patrons. Tucker examines feeders, filters, and hair and lint traps to ensure safety. He also examines the disinfection systems and makes sure equipment is free from physical hazards like debris. This pool has a chemical feeding device connected directly to the circulation system as required by law. This is the automatic disinfection controller that's used to monitor and adjust the levels of disinfectant in the pool. Tucker also examines the records. Pools must keep test logs on file for at least two years. When everything is in order, Tucker can write up his inspection report. Our inspection reports are completed digitally to provide fast service to our customers and quick access to the public.